Hi, Kristen. You're the director of Frank Curio, the um, documentary. And first of all, how did the story came to you? Um, yeah, so it started off because I wanted to go back to Curacao because I'm from there um, to go and shoot a project there. And I wanted to start off with doing something about baseball uh, because it's a really big sport there. So the first script that I wrote was something super small was just to go shoot some um, content and a small documentary from one of the players out there. But then when I got to the island, it started developing. And then when you're on the ground, the script the script that I had went out the window. I wrote another one because I, um, I ended up meeting Frank Curiel on, by kind of by accident because I got to the field, one per I got to a baseball field uh, in, called Tio Dao, um, and I had a meeting with Hensley Merlin. He sent me to another person, that person sent me to another person, that person sent me, and everybody was telling me, oh, you got to go to Frank, you got to go to Frank, you got to go to Frank. So, and then when I ended up going there, I, I had a, I was spontaneous. So I had breakfast with, um, with someone, and he called up, and he was like, can I send you over this kid to, he wants to shoot a documentary. Uh, and I send him over to you and I went over and uh, we, 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 we sat for like an hour and a half. And then I asked him if I could reshoot my whole documentary on him. And uh, that's kind of how it all started. And you um, immediately connected probably with Frank. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got along really well. Um, the first, I think we spent like two hours talking. Um, and then after that, you know, documentaries, it's, it's a lot of, I think it's more all about showing up and just kind of continuously showing up. And I think I spent about two months on the island, but of those two months, I think I only filmed like three weeks or so um, because it was just about going there, meeting him, making sure that, you know, he doesn't see that I'm just not like, I'm serious about this yeah. project. And it was a very, very, very small scale project, very small um, production. I mean, it was just me. And Zena, who is the Zena Rigo, she's the um, other girl that helped me um, film. So we, we, and just one camera. And yeah, so that, that's how it all wow. came together. And what do you think is the secret of Frank? Whew. I really yeah. love that he said at a certain point, I just yell at you just because I see the potential. You know, yeah. it's not about the yeah. yelling, it's just he sees it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely this essence of him that, you know, he doesn't take any bullshit, excuse my language. Like, he just um, tells it as, as it is. Um, even now, you see him when he trains the kid. He doesn't go on the field as much as he used to anymore. He has people that kind of help, and everyone there is mainly volunteers teaching and training these, these kids. But even now, you see him, and he's, like, in his 70s, and he's still full of energy in the middle of, you know, the sun just, you know, training kids and I think he's just super passionate about baseball and that uh, it it oozes out from him to everybody else so I think that's kind of the the secret I guess but yeah. it's, it's Frank <laughs> yeah and um, you already mentioned before the success rate of the amount of players can you explain something about that yeah so um Curacao is, is, is a small island, so I mean, it only has 160,000 people. And because the kind of the secret of the island that a lot of people talk about is that um, the fields are, are made out of dirt, a lot of them. They're dirt fields. They've got bumps in them, rocks. Um, so all these kids are training in very harsh conditions. You know, they're not training in, in luxury stadiums or um, field, baseball fields that you would see out in, you know, in the U.S., so all these kids coming up are training, learning to throw themselves out on the dirt, getting bumps and scratches. And, you know, even when the ball comes and hits the floor, there might be a rock that sends the ball into another direction. So these kids learn how to analyze where the ball is going, even if it's a spontaneous turn. So all these things, you know, make, make these players um, a lot more agile. And you can see that reflected out in the U.S., you know, when, um, you know, Jonathan Scopes out in the U.S. and he told me the same thing. It's just that we're, we're, we're people there from Kyrgyzstan are built different. They're just kind of, they're used to harsh conditions. So when they go yeah. play on a, on a perfect field in, in, in the U.S. with grass and, you easy, know, soft easy, sand, 
yeah, I mean, for them, it's like landing in cloud, you know, they, they mm-hmm. fall and it's like, um, so that's kind of one of the things that is just um, one of the reasons why Kyrsa has such a, um, a great success Kyrsa. rate. Um, but it's also because it's, one, it's a small island. It's one yeah. on every 10,000 inhabitants, something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, around, like around, around that, you know, so, and if you take that number, if you take that ratio and you multiply it, if, it, if Kyrsa had the population size of the U.S., like you would have so many more players but um and that's that's why i think it's so fascinating that um curacao is is on the map you know in the baseball world curacao is is known um not only for their little league championships you know curacao has won several times um they have players out in the um, uh, mlb you have hensley maryland coaching uh on the bench coach uh, i think he's at the new york mets now um mm-hmm. so you can you see that curacao is 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 there and i think that's kind of what drove drove me to to do this uh, i don't play baseball so mm-hmm. and so I just was, yeah i mean i i just love you know being at the trying to another reason why i wanted to do this film is because i wanted to connect back with my island um i, I moved to barcelona when i was really young so i grew up mainly in barcelona um so for, this was a, a way for me to go back to my island spend mm-hmm. time with people that i normally wouldn't be um, around and learn about something that learn firsthand, you know, rather than yeah. just keep, because you, you read a lot about the success of baseball um, from from different books and, and news stations. So it's, it's cool. To, you know, I have the feeling the, the baseball players also want to give back to the island. Yeah. Yeah. They have uh, in January, Hensley Merlin's and other um, uh, players and coaches, they organize this thing called Curacao Baseball Week, where they basically invite people from the MLB over down to the island. All the players are on, on break, so they come back to the island, and everyone, all the players are there, and then they invite all the kids around. They have to sign up, you know, and then they hand out gift, gift bags, you know, with equipment, material. They invite um, the coaches as well to get training sessions. So uh, you, can, you can really feel that people want to give back, you know, and, you know, Curacao, they are trying to uplift each other um, as much as possible. And it's, it's really crazy to see, you know, that community come together and lift each other up. And, um, and the kids need it. I mean, it's Curacao is going through a pretty rough time. I think most people are nowadays and sports is kind of baseball for a lot of the young kids. It's, it's something that has helped them a lot to kind of, you know, as Frank in the documentary, not even Frank Hensley, everybody kind of talks about, you know, sport being something savior type of thing. It keeps them from the streets, huh? Yeah, you know, it keeps them on in in the on the field with different people, and they're getting trained with with um, coaches. You know, trying to educate them because you know, um, it depends also what area you are you are you are in Curacao. Um, in some, you know, just like most countries, some there's better conditioned fields in different in better parts of the island and worse in others. But also, um, uh, COVID uh, was really hard for the island. Huh? Yeah, COVID, COVID really kind of hit hard. I mean, I think any small community like that or island, you know, they probably they had a rough time. I mean, Curacao thrives from from tourism, and it stopped for almost almost a year and a half. So um, it was it's it's pretty bad. I mean, that's kind of yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, I understand. And um, how is Frank doing nowadays? You say he's... Um, yeah, nowadays I haven't actually talked to him for a while because he it's really hard to contact him on, on WhatsApp uh, or on the phone. So And actually he hasn't seen the documentary yet because my goal, I was supposed to go to Curso, um earlier this year and I wanted to go show it to him and I wanted to host an event there. And um, But COVID hit, so I couldn't do that. And I want to send him the link with the proper sound. So as soon as that happens, um, I'm going to share it with him. But I needed to get these festivals going as well because of the deadlines. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited to show him. And I think I'm going to Curious as well in December, uh, end of December and January. And I'm, I want to also show it to him in person. Um, so I'm excited for that. So I'm kind of like in this imagine. point where do I send him a link and have him watch it alone? Or do I go and watch it with him? Yeah, uh, but I, I I'm not uh, I haven't 
talked to him for a long time. So, um, and, and one question, do you think he ever got invited to go to the States and see his players there? I mean, he, he, he's told me that he's been to the States and, uh, and he's trained there and he's played there. Um, but he, he stays nowadays a lot more in, this was when he was younger. He, he did travel a lot in, uh, in the Dominican Republic as well, uh, in Cuba, Venezuela, you know, and he also went to the States for a little bit. Um, but he, he stayed in Curacao most of, most of his time. Um, and yeah. I don't think he's been, been there for a while. No. Yeah. Well, it will yeah. be super exciting for you to show the documentary yeah. to him and to all the kids, I guess. Yeah, that was the that was the aim. You know, my aim was was mainly to make a a, a film to um, for the people there, and like I wanted to show, uh, I want them, I wanted the kids to feel represented, and you know, have them on screen. A lot of the angles that we we shot with were really low and kind of uh, angled upward. So we can give them, make them look really big on screen. Um, so that was um, that was the whole purpose was just to give them the stage, you know. So hopefully, when I get back to Curacao in January, I might be hopefully want to try and organize this uh, screening like uh, at the field if 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 possible. I would have to get in contact amazing, with them. honestly. Yeah. And yeah. I really have to say, like being Dutch and watching the documentary because it's Curacao, it feels like really close to your heart. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's a really beautiful documentary. And um, yeah. thank you thank so you. much for your time. No, thank you guys for the selection, and I'm looking really looking forward to. Um, I'll be coming up to, in December to to attend. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to being part of this festival. Thank wow. you guys so much. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much.